at centre-half forward. The Blues doing the attacking. The bounce taking place. Thompson coming on the scene, beaten by Mackay. Tapped down toward Keogh. Keogh can't pick up. A chance for Collingwood to go forward. The ball kicked up toward Bissett at the centre. Kevin Hall coming out. Just got the ball. He just about overrun it. He still has the ball in front of him. And with the pace up, Kevin Hall goes forward. On half-forward flank, he drives in toward the goals. Coming out the meter is Davis. No mark taken. A chance for Carlton. We see them sweep on it. Robbie Walls has lost it. They've all missed it in turn. A lot of weight being used. The ball on the ground now. There's Mackay appealing for the free kick. And by Ian Robertson will penalise this one against Jeff Clifton. And David Mackay will take the shot at goal for Carlton. Fair enough. Bumper Ian Robinson indicated earlier in the day that uh, if you lay on top of the ball, uh, you're going to be penalised. So David Mackay from only 25 metres out, directly in front, every chance of notching Carlton's second goal. The big Carlton Ruckman, number 43, comes in to blaze away at goals. A full-blooded kick, it's on its way, it's full points. So David Mackay now brings Carlton score along to 2-7, 19 points. Now only 13 points behind Collingwood's tally of 4-8-32. Carlton uh, were left holding the bag early in the first quarter. It was all Collingwood. I think they ran up 3-5, Frank, before uh, Carlton actually scored. And... Uh, it looked like all Collingwood in the first quarter. They didn't have a very good quarter in actually kicking for goal, but neither did Carlton when you think about it. 4-8 to 1 goal, 6. Not very good shooting for goal, but believe you me, the atmosphere here at VFL Park is tremendous and the pressure upon the players out there competing would be great. And umpire Robinson, the pressure on him is great too, but he's doing a great job. Robinson bouncing once again. The Ruckman come in. Jones beaten by... Uh, or Thompson beaten by Jones. Got the tap down. And Carlton going forward through the boot of Crane. Up towards centre-half forward. It's a chance for Jezelenko. He's caught but got the hand pass over to Keogh, Keogh going goalward, he shoots at goalward, dropping in the square, got Nichols do battle, punched away by Gott, picked up by uh, Walsh and shot at goal, right across the face, only an out of bounds resulting in Collingwood's free kick, which will be taken by Doug Gott. Once again, got uh, sticking to instructions very closely, punching the ball away from Nichols and has done a fine job so far. So it's back with Doug Gott to take the free kick for the out of bounds on the full decision. From the point post, drives the ball up towards the half-forward flank area, punched away from Dool. he recovers quickly, gives chase, can't uh, handle the ball well, Atkinson's in there also, but Dool hand passes it out, picked up and kicked high by Gary Crane, Walsh sits in front and has it punched away from him by Callaghan, he recovers, hung on to, he didn't have it, he's in there being pushed, Go, runs along the grab and crab uh, style fashion, Armstrong goes down, it's been picked up here, Walsh can't get a kick in and a lot of hard, uh, heavy tackling football going on. Play uh, holding the man. So holding the man decision, uh, Robert Walls to take the free kick, point blank range, only 15 to 18 metres out, dead smack in front. This would be a goal in my reckoning. Robert yep. Walls has kicked one behind in this match so far, coming in trying for his first goal. Collingwood on 4-8, Carlton 2-7, not much in it at all if Walls kicks this goal. Walls coming in, point blank range, shoots at him. What does the umpire say? He's missed it, only one behind. Well, bad miss, we've already told you how far Robert Walls it was out. 15 metres directly in front and a costly mistake by Robbie Walls. We'll be back to Jeff Clifton to drive the ball into play. Just uh, there's a story of the, the uh, game on the board. Just having a look downfield and uh, believe you me, the runners are certainly being well worked today. Jeff Clifton defending out towards the grandstand side of the ground. Peter Jones into the back of Thompson and Dean chipping and marking easily. That's Robert a good move. Dean. That's the second time that Thompson and Jones have competed and Dean chipped in to take the mark. The kick's up toward Bissett in the centre of VFL Park. Bissett takes the mark and umpire Robinson said, it's yours, you can play on now, which he does. Looks for Max Richardson. He's uh, being chased by Kevin Hall. The ball on the turf in front of this pair. Neither can grab it as yet. Oh, Richardson well recovered there. He picked it up nicely. He left puts it up towards the half-forward zone. It's beaten all players, but we're now chipped in first. Went into his own teammate. It's big Peter Jones trying to pick up. Couldn't do so. The relieving kick comes from Byrne downfield. It's been taken and pushed while Dixon was about to keep going but he couldn't quite uh, get moving and now Dixon will go back and take the kick it's in toward Davis in the centre of VFL Park Craig Davis picks up nicely and from this position drives in toward the centre half forward area a bad miss by Clifton comes out toward Nichols Clifton on the scene Nichols picks up forks around the opposition on the left foot Nichols steps at goal over the hill the opponent in goal and what a Carlton goal has been picked this time by skipper and coach John Nichols well there it is the story of football a bad mistake by Clifton, uh, he uh, admittedly he came at the ball on an awkward angle but it ricocheted off his chest 
went across and uh, we found Nichols. And I didn't think he had uh, or was nimble enough bones to turn round like that. But he got round a left foot snap from 40 metres out, put it through. So Carlton, who at quarter time were trailing by 20 points, now moved to within one straight goal of Collingwood. The Magpies on 4 8 32, and it's Carlton on 3 8 26. Well, that's a real story uh, for a backman. Never have your opponent kick the ball over your head when shooting for goal. But that's what Nichols did to got. It's been picked up by Max Richardson. The hand pass comes up to Cranich. Cranich crossing the centre and driving up toward half forward. McKenna hasn't had a touch in this match yet. It won't get one here. It's on the ground where Jenkins gives chase. Hasn't got the pace to match Byrne. Byrne picks up, looks for Crane and finds him with a well-placed kick. Even though it was a rather high pass, Gary Crane winning handsomely on his wing. He's on half back at present. A hand pass coming out now to Pennell. Pennell picks up, kicks up toward the centre of the ground. His kick up toward Walls and Walls out in front has taken the mark. Brian Quirk, the Carlton 19th man warming up round the outskirts of the boundary as Robert Walls puts Carlton into attack up towards centre half forward. Out they come. Nichols uh, ricochet the ball, ricochets off his shin, comes back here towards David Dixon. He hooks it high up towards the forward pocket area. They wait for it down there. They stretch. It's been punched away. An opportunity here for Carlton through Kevin Hall if he can get to it. Granich comes in. That Hall had the fumbles and forced it through for one behind. Carlton doing most of the attacking now. At quarter time, they're on 1-6, so they've batted 2-3 for the quarter. Collingwood as yet have not scored for this period. The Magpies 4-8-32. Jezelenko off. Jezelenko off for Carlton, although I suppose that's even Stephen. Collingwood lost Ross Dunn in the first quarter. Jezelenko suffered his injury late in the first quarter and now has been replaced by Brian Quirk. The ball coming back into play, dropping short and taken by Doug Gott. He takes the mark, goes for the bounce straight away, gets a left foot kick up towards the centre wing position and finds Alan Atkinson. Atkinson uh, trying to play on, finally gets away, and he too bounces as soon as he gets it clear. A long hand pass by Atkinson, a beauty, and Collingwood further into attack now. The hand pass was Ray Richardson towards Avon. He dropped it in, came Croswell using a little bit of weight down there. Good tactics by Croswell, and uh, umpire Robinson signalling that the ball will be thrown in, and uh, once again we see a side uh, paying the penalty through having the fumbles. That time, Avon was clear, could have got going, but couldn't do so. Jenkin doing the ruck work in front of Jones, and winning out too, taps it down here. It's been sharked by Arm strong from out of back pocket area he puts a long kick back up towards center wing they fly Mackay stretch couldn't bring it down picked up by, by Hall has this fella got some pace for a big guy he kicks high towards Nichols and from behind and Nichols it's a great knock he plays on puts it high in the air it's starting to work its way down it's got the distance hasn't got the accuracy and another point the big John and the Blues now on 310 28 or 39 three sorry 310 28 and uh, Collingwood on 48 32. Only four points the difference, nine and a half minutes into the second quarter, and Carlton looking the better side at this stage. The kick-in will come from Clifton, looking for Thompson. Thompson won't get to this one. Robert Dean will fly. He did got his hands to it, but couldn't take the mark. A chance now for Dick. Players fumbling near the boundary line. Keogh trying to force the ball out of the pack. Being hotly pressed by O'Callaghan. Thompson coming on the scene. He upset uh, Keogh completely. His hand pass from Thompson now finding Barry Price. Price going upfield. He's going up towards a half-forward flank area. Hand pass to Big Jenkins. Should hand pass it quickly. He does so. Up toward uh, Big Bob Hurd. He should get it moving. Bob Hurd now straightens up. Shoots at goal for Collingwood. And it looks like, no, he's just missed. It's in the square. And well taken away here by Byrne. Byrne of Carlton. Backing his judgment. Kicking out for now, Crane beaten on this occasion by Atkinson, Atkinson of Collingwood from half forward straightens up, balks another opponent from centre half forward, he looks for teammate, he sees McKenna but he can't find him, Southby takes it away and Southby hand passes now it's out of trouble, Southby to Crane Crane to Southby. Can this fella go have a look at him play, up towards half forward flank, the Blues in attack, punch down trapped by Dixon, spun out of trouble beautifully across the Craig Davis, he finds the loose man, puts it up in the mark, taken by Craig, but he got some treatment too that now that's going to be a 15 minute penalty umpire Robinson coming in Nichols coming up and saying well how about it it was paid at the other end in the first term but it's Quirk he'll have the shot from 25 metres out 45 degree angle the Blues starting to move, and what a magnificent dash by Southby as Quirk from a result of that play drives the ball goalwards, but he too's offline, and uh, one point the result. I noticed Thompson calling for the trainer there, Frank. There's such a shot of Brian Quirk on the screen, but then Thompson calling for the Collingwood trainer. He doesn't appear injured in any way, looking for a wet towel, that's about all it is. He hasn't had much to do, or hasn't done much in this game. Jones has tailed Thompson for most of the day, but now it's Clifton coming in looking for Thompson, who has the front berth at present in front of Peter Jones. There they both fly. Jones into the back of Thompson. This one will be paid. 
And Addison, uh, that when Thompson and James were going for the mark, Robert Dean had taken up his position in the side, ready to chip in. But uh, a free kick to Len Thompson put paid to that little plan as Thompson comes in, puts the ball up towards centre wing. Dixon in good position, but Dean chipping in, and by Crikey, he's playing well. He's taking a lot of marks today, Robert Dean. Bob Hurd is calling for the ball on the up in the half forward flank area. It's been kicked in this direction. Jenkins in front and Hurd will they will compete. The man in front, Graham Jenkins, has been paid the mark in front of his teammate Bob Hurd. The ball is on half forward flank for Collingwood, with Collingwood kicking to the southern end of VFL Park, but the scores are showing on the little board there. There's only three points of difference with Collingwood in front. The short pass by Jenkins can't find Wayne Richardson. It's into the forward pocket. Not good tactics for mine, but that's the way the Collingwood side is playing it into the pocket. And now we'll see a boundary thrown in Collingwood's forward pocket area. Twelve and a half minutes into the second quarter, the throw-in taking place. Bob Hurd against Jones, got the tap down, but gave away the free kick. So Peter Jones taking on the Collingwood big men, that goes for the short pass, looks and fought, finds Walsh on half-back flank. Brian Walsh, Carlton second rover, leading goal kicker with, uh, for the year with some 57 goals to his tally, comes in with a nice-looking torpedo punt kick, up to where Mackay can't uh, handle his footing, taken here by Thompson, pace and strength, away he goes, up towards centre-half forward, the lead's a good one, the pass not so good, Southby's there, he punches it away, Dool's there also, taps the ball in front of him, chased down by Hurd, as Dool hand passes to get out of trouble towards Southby, Southby in turn, a long hand pass out there with, towards Pennell, and Pennell, who's got pace, gets around if he can handle it, if he can keep it in play, he does so, he kicks high towards centre wing position in they come oh. <laughs> a good mark down there and I tell you Mackay is certainly riding high but that's Collingwood through Cranage moving to attack across towards centre half forward Dixon's there Dean got his hands to it couldn't hang on to it the ball picked up here and kicked further forward by Brian Walsh high towards centre half forward uh, Callaghan took a good mark didn't wait round for it to be paid played on kick back towards the centre and a free kick uh, will go Collingwood's way or Carlton's way I should say towards David Dixon David Dixon from the centre of the ground Nichols calling for the ball about 20 metres out from goal but Dixon going for the short one in toward Robert Walls the players compete Walls can't take the mark Salmon coming on the scene for Collingwood can't pick up cleanly he's got the fumbles and got the staggers got a hand pass out of trouble which could favour uh, the Collingwood half forward or oh, it's Wearmouth was coming on the scene has decided not to he got Quirk with another one and a free kick to flying Quirk that's two free kicks given away by Ronnie Wearmouth in the last minute of football Brian Quirk on centre wing, heads across now towards the half forward flank area. The ball starting to drop short, an easy mark to Brian Walsh. Plays on quickly. Out he goes, kicks it high. The lead's a good one by Craig Davis, and it, the pass to, and it'll be Craig Davis to have a shot at goal from uh, 50 metres out. Only three points in the game, and Davis let go a beautiful kick earlier. I think he could score. 50 metres out, in he comes, the torpedo punt kick. This one's a ripper, I'll tell you that. It's a beauty. It's a 65 down, right through the middle, and Carlton, for the first time in the game, hit the front. The Blues, before a record crowd out here at Fairfell Park, go to 4 11 35. Collingwood on 4 8 32. A beautiful kick by uh, young fella Davis. I saw him earlier in the, in the day, let go with a big kick, which only brought up the point, but that one was a lovely kick, and split the centre of the goals, and to bring up. That goal, the fourth goal for Carlton, and Frank has told you they now lead by three points. But nothing in the game at all. Fifteen minutes into the second quarter, it's Carlton by three points in front of Collingwood. And the Collingwood big men shape up. Oh, this favours Jones, the tap down taken by Keogh. Keogh hand passes to Duell. Duell shot it out once again. It's been kicked now, well downfield by Armstrong. Down toward the half-forward zone with a tap down. Comes down to Cranage, he hand passes out of trouble. Is a chance for Collingwood to go forward. Salmon takes his second bounce as he comes up toward the centre line. The short pass coming up to Max Richardson. Can't take the mark, the ball out of bounds. And the throw-in will result on centre wing. Collingwood gain the boundary line, Bones, which uh, they're making their job hard in the second term. Playing wide, playing the short pass, Carlton more direct and using the handball to the man going past. Big pack of players down there to contest it, but it's only Thompson who rises. The tap down wasn't an accurate one. Armstrong came ripping into the pack, got tackled high and will take the free kick. Armstrong is on centre wing with Carlton kicking toward the Wellington Road end of VFL Park, he's looking downfield, Walls is well covered, the kick is going toward Mackay, Mackay and Walls may compete, no, it's a beat, all of them, it's over the top, Adamson hooked it in, but the umpire has indicated a free kick, and Cranage applauding the efforts of David Mackay on that occasion, as Cranage has been awarded the free kick against him. From half-back, Cranage looking upfield, Jenkins giving the lead, Cranage kicking toward Jenkins, the big fellas come in. Jenkins with a lot of bulk can't take the mark. It's been forced to turf. It's all Carlton until Jenkins comes on the scene, got the fumbles, and once again missed it. It looks like he's playing tunnel ball with it. Umpire Robinson coming in will bounce on centre wing on the member's side of VFL Park. 
umpire Robertson putting the leather to the turf. As Jenkins prepares to do battle against Jones, Jones gets the front position, taps it down towards Armstrong. Quickly onto the left, but he goes, his kick's ill-directed, an easy mark to Thompson. A hand pass whipped across, and it's been taken here in Collingwood, about to move further forward, but got plenty of weight being used as Thompson picks up, shoots one across there towards Cranich, hit Cranich as a centre-half forward, Dool in close attention as Cranich breaks clear, gets onto the right foot, Thompson calling for the hand pass, it's Max Richardson who chips in and takes it, he gets back on the right foot, 58 metres out from goal, let's fly with a long kick, but well offline, doesn't score, out of bounds on the ball, as Finn White moves into position to take the kick. 17 minutes into the second quarter and Carlton lead by three points. 4-11 to 4-8 against Collingwood. The kick by Waite is a short one out toward Pennell. Pennell taking the mark in the back pocket for Carlton. He is on the outer side and kicking toward the Wellington Road end of Veerfeld Park. Pennell looking downfield towards centre wing. The kick is travelling towards Kevin Hall. It's over his head. Price and uh, Walsh Armstrong do battle. Can't be picked up. Drain got a hand pass going nicely. And now it's Carlton going forward. Walls down there flying high. Can't take the mark. They recovered quickly. In the charge now has been picked up by Quirk. Quirk swinging around. A big kick would put it right in the teeth of goal, so to speak. It's been kicked over the head of Clifton, who got his hands to it. Couldn't take the mark. It's Clifton under all, in all sorts of bother. Pushed the ball forward. Oh, against oh, Scott. Against Scott. Got kicking in danger against Scott. Nichols coming in, using his strength. Umpire Robinson coming in to try and control the situation, which he will do. And got being penalised in the last flight of defence and Carlton every chance to go to a, uh, to a nine-point lead after this shot at goal. You'd wonder how a player could do that, Jack. There was no doubt the ball was actually in the hands of Robert Walls. And the Doug got coming in only 20 metres out, directly in front of goal just about. And uh, poor play by Doug Gott, so Robert Walls a chance to take advantage of it. The Blues sitting on a three-point lead, 18 and a half minutes into the second term. As Walls begins to concentrate, using the drop punt kick, 25 metres out, boot the ball, puts it on its way, he spares it and it's gone right through and Carlton looking good as they go along to 5-11, 41 points. Now nine points clear of Collingwood who still remain on their quarter time score, that score being 4-8-32. Well Carlton to move their quarter time score from 1-6 to 5-11 so it's been a very uh, profitable quarter for them. They now have kicked four goals five and as Frank has told you Collingwood have not yet scored. So we're up to the 18 or nearly the 19 minute mark of the second quarter and it's all Collingwood in this the second quarter in the second semi-final at Veerfeld Park. Umpire Robinson bouncing once again. Jones with the front berth, but Thompson beat him to it. It will be taken by Cray. No, he's missed it. A chance now for Price of Collingwood to get moving. On the left foot he goes, looking down. Phil McKenna's out. No, it's over his head. And a good mark in defence by Vinny Waite of Carlton. A very good mark, a strong mark taken by Waite. Only 20 metres out. The hand passes to uh, Southby. He looks over and a good pass and finds uh, Kevin Hall. Kevin Hall on out a half-back flank area, driving toward the, the wing, taken here by Wayne Richardson, being tackled by Duell. Richardson now getting the boot to the ball, but over the boundary line on the ball, and Carlton will take the free kick from the half-back flank. The Magpies in the second term not doing anything right. Down there is Barry Armstrong, about to take his kick, looks downfield, goes for the placement kick up towards Walls on half-forward flank, Walls lead, Adamson spoils, and uh, Richardson tries to keep Walls out, but to no avail, it's... Uh, a tackle that's judged too high. The boundary umpire not aware of it yet. Well, he will be in a minute. Robert Walls just told him. Collingwood's way. And uh, he says, well, what about it? So it comes back to Wayne Richardson. The Collingwood skipper started off quite well. As, uh, 15 metre penalty now, too, against Walls. Didn't come back when whistled by umpire Ian Robinson. The Carlton fans are... Uh, Lending voice to that decision, but there it is, Wayne Richardson on centre wing on the outer side, driving up toward the half-forward flank area. And they wait for it, the ball down there, tapped away from Thompson, picked up and kicked by Armstrong, up towards the centre of the ground, trapped here by Dre Dean, trapped neatly too. He gets a hand pass across here, and it's uh, where Cranage for Collingwood, who puts him forward, up towards the half-forward flank. Aborn's there, traps it, takes it away from his teammate Bissett, gets onto the left foot, goes for the short pass, South B. Oh, he can't play at all, can he, Jack? Can't play at all, but I don't know why Aborn didn't go for the long shot at goal, because Bob Hurd was in the square. They fly high, dual spoil. It's on the turf. Atkinson using strength against Ben Waite. Hurd hand passes out to Wayne Richardson from the forward pocket on the wrong foot. He hooks it goal. It's going on its way. A beautiful goal kicked by Wayne Richardson of Collingwood, which has moved Collingwood up now to five goals, 8.38, and Calvin on five goals, 11.41. A beautiful piece of play by Richardson after he received that hand pass from Bob Hurd. Well, going back to Oborn, Frank, I thought he would have been well advised to drive the ball in deep because uh, 
McKenna hasn't had one kick yet against Southby, and where Bob Hurd was in the goal square, he could have taken the mark, or possibly could have taken the mark. Uh, going for the short pass to a man who hasn't had a touch ball, to my mind, wasn't good thinking. Carlton's fourth goal came at the 20-minute mark of the first term. Their fifth goal came at the 21-minute mark of the second term. They do battle. They throw each other into themselves. No free kick. In there goes Armstrong, a desperate player, diving on top of the ball and crashing through as courageous Gary Crane. Kicks high up the wood, centre-half forward, and diving mark comes off for Lee Adamson. Lee Adamson should come straight up the ground toward Thompson. Thompson at centre-half forward. The kick by Adamson hasn't got it correctly. It's from the side of the boot. Robert Dean flying. Oh, and just got it. A juggle mark has been paid. He's dead in the centre of the ground. The lead is out toward the half-forward flank. The kick hasn't travelled to Oborn. Over the back of the pack is Bissett waiting to crumb. It's Bissett now on the half-forward flank. Looks for Thompson. Thompson stretching. Thompson takes the mark in the forward pocket. Skittles a couple, or just about skittled a couple of cameramen on the way through. And then Thompson from this position has a very difficult shot. I'll just see what comes out of this. South beyond the mark has now been relieved and South will go back and take his position. He's right for one in the goal square. Thompson from this position, only 40 yards out. Or we go back to 35 metres. Thompson shoots at goal. It's swinging. It's up there, but the mark has nearly been taken. The umpire indicates Touch. one point. Touched all clear. Once again, it'll be the champion fullback, Jeff Southby, to kick in with his side, the Blues, now leading by only two points. A tight game, 22 minutes and 50 seconds into the second quarter. Players going everywhere down there, but Southby deciding on the long kick. Kicks it high, more towards centre-half back than anything else. They double back on it, the ball comes to the ground. Taken by Price, breaks clear, looks for a teammate, can't find one. Decides to put it long up towards Thompson. He waits for it down there, plenty of pushing and shoving, got his hands to it. No mark, you earn your free kicks and your marks today. A push in the back towards Rain Richardson, helps him on his way. The kick's hooked back high. It won't swing in enough as far as Collingwood are concerned. And another point registered, although well, we like find... The free kick there. Umpire Ian Robinson going back down, Phil, speaking to uh, Peter McKenna, indicating a free kick to Vin White. So I missed that one, Jack, but I'd say that in an effort to shepherd uh, Richardson, the free kick was given away by Peter McKenna. Umpire Ian Robinson not missing anything today. Umpiring very, very well indeed. The kick by Waite coming downfield toward Jones. The man in front, he flies high, can't take the mark. Robert Dean of Collingwood forcing the ball along, but has forced it over the boundary line. The throw will take place on Collingwood's half-forward flank. Only two points in the game. This uh, still in Cal in favour, 5-9 to 5-11 Collingwood trailing by the two points at the 20, or over 24 minute mark of the second quarter where Dool takes the tap from Thompson, on the left foot he travels down towards centre wing, the mark has been taken by Quirk, and this is coming through uh, good umpiring not going to give away a 15 I think he was a bit of a stage by Quirk and now Quirk drives down toward half forward kicks it high, they fly, punched away an opportunity for Adamson, could have grabbed it but pushed it forward to the boundary line, the bounce slows him down a bit tackle too high around the neck and he'll take the free kick around the neck was right <laughs> rather wild one by Robbie Walls on that occasion a very lively game of football being witnessed by 60,500 people at VFL Park as the kick comes in from Adamson up toward Big Peter Jones. Richardson too small, couldn't spoil, taken by Quirk once again. Away he goes, he's playing well for the 90th man that came on at the 25-minute mark, kicks high and Gary Crane marks. Gets, gets a little bit of treatment, but I won't worry, Crane. He's at centre-half forward, 58 eight metres out from goal. That's how far the point of the diamond is from the goals here at VFL Park. As he comes in from that position, puts a long floating punt kick up towards the goal square. It comes down here, punched across the face of goal. Picked up and kicked by Addison. Kicked high too. They wait for it to come down there, and the man in front is Robert Walls. Well, Robbie Walls has had a couple of shots for goal today. Had three in actual fact. And missed one easy one earlier in the quarter, but has kicked one since. To his credit, he has one goal, two behinds out of the Carlton total of five goals, 11. And from this position, only about 30 metres out, I would say that Walls could score again. Let's see if Jack Edwards is correct. 20 seconds of the time on as Robert Walls comes in. Carlton leading by two points, slips oh. and he kicks. And uh, that threw him right out of the calculations as far as scoring goals were concerned. So Carlton from the uh, foot of Robbie Walls uh, don't move anywhere. They stay on a two-point lead. And uh, we're down there with Jeff Clifton into the time on period just before half time as Clifton puts boot the ball, kicks it high the big men fly, Jenkins coming in, walls in front everyone up, it comes down to the ground here it's anyone's go down there, players diving on top of the ball and comes umpire Robinson to bounce, only 35 metres out from Carlton's goal as the 26 minute mark comes up, we see Collingwood down by two points to Carlton Robbie Wall's about to put them forward here's the uh, umpire indicating a free kick and uh, Wayne Richardson having a few words to say, but Robbie Walls has been awarded this free kick by umpire Ian Robertson. Another opportunity to score from 
this position where Walls uh, slipped before as he's coming into goal. This time we'll see if he can do any better. That's Robbie Walls using a torpedo punt kick. Won't quite make the distance. A big pack will fly. And a Carlton mark right in the goal square. A good mark has been taken by Craig Davis. Davis right in the... Uh, oh, he will kick from about eight metres out at the most. Craig Davis taking a beautifully judged mark right in the teeth of goal. Davis now coming in, trying for the shot at goal. Has kicked one. Shoots at goal from point blank range and Craig Davis kicks his second goal in this day, uh, in this match today for Carlton. And Carlton just prior to the half-time break have moved away on 6-11-47 and Collingwood on five goals, 9-39. Well, Craig Davis, a Tasmanian recruit, 18 years of age, six feet, 11 stone 12 and uh, playing his fourth game of league football and uh, certainly an effective player. Well, I suppose he must be, Jack. He's uh, pushed Sid Jackson out of that half-forward flank position. And uh, whilst Jackson's had an up-and-down season, we're used to seeing this in the past, but we're also used to seeing Jackson here for the final games. Not so this year. 18-year-old Davis doing it and doing it well. Two and a half minutes into time on. Away we go again. Up they go. Jones doing a lot of the rucking. Thompson taps it down here. Has been trapped here by Keogh. Got on the right foot back to the left. Gets out of trouble with a hand pass and a left foot kick. Comes up towards centre half uh, forward position. But in the way for Collingwood is Paul Cranage. Cranage from half back flank area. Looking upfield to where Jenkins is leading toward the boundary line. The kick won't quite carry to Jenkins. He'll have to hurry up to get to it. He flies now at the back of the pack and a well judged mark. After showing a bit of pace, Jenkins taking the mark for Collingwood. Half forward flank on the member side. Jenkins moving the ball now with a poor kick up toward. The Richardson, uh, Wayne Richardson that was, but the man in front who has the job today of tagging Wayne Richardson is Bruce Dool. A short pass coming out and it's Croswell from half back now going up toward the half forward zone. The kick travelling up toward this position where the mark has been missed by O'Callaghan. Taken out and good balking by Walls getting the ball forward. A chance for Adamson of Collingwood picking up now a small kick, not a good one, could find Robert Dean. He's very close to the boundary line, he's out of bounds and a throw will have to take place on centre wing on the member's side. The quarter just about gone. I notice that since uh, Jesselinko went off, Craig Davis has been shifted to full forward. But it's back to a position that's about 10 metres over the centre line on Collingwood's forward line where they do battle for the boundary throw in. Tapped down by Thompson, tapped down well. Wearmouth couldn't handle it, picked up by Dean. Just got a quick kick in up towards a half forward flank where Richardson has the ball punched away from him by Bruce Toole. Collingwood's half forward flank, 60 metres out from goal. Thompson. Moving into position to do the ruck battle against uh, Peter Jones. And what a battle it's been so far. Jones, front position, taps it down here, taken. And Carlton through Keogh, go up towards the centre wing position. Walls, who's had a better second quarter, trying to get back into the action here. Can't do so. Now he's got an opportunity, pushing it round cleverly. It's been taken away from him by Wearmouth. It's umpire Robinson says play on. Walls gets a shove in the back, but Wearmouth runs a good 10 metres across towards the centre half back position for Collingwood. Streams up towards the centre. No one can catch him. He gets a kick into the open territory on the half forward flank, trapped here by. Jenkins, he didn't have the pace of agility to take advantage of it, taken by Atkinson a long hand pass up to Bob Hurd in the forward pocket, he can't get to it, he can get to it but it's out of bounds and uh, Collingwood when it really counted, didn't have the pace or the agility to convert Well I thought that Atkinson would have had a shot frame from that position, doing the right thing by the side, looking for Bob Hurd in the forward pocket, but we all know that Bob Hurd lacks mobility and agility, that's been tapped down but once again Jones takes his own tap there's a big pack going to form up here as Bissett tried to barge his way through, umpire Robinson will bounce and this bounce taking place no more than 20 metres out from the Collingwood goal. Collingwood trailing 5-9-39 to 6-11-47 a chance for Bissett taking the crumb and being held up by Robinson not seeing this one he's called play on. Collingwood fans aren't happy with the, that decision but now we see Carlton moving forward downfield where Dixon is doing battle. It's been well picked up here and Daryl Salmon of Collingwood looking for Thompson and finding Thompson Thompson being spoiled too late by David Mackay. Jack, a little bit of staging going on out there, but umpire Ian Robinson not being sucked in at all, and it's, it's certainly refreshing to see. So Thompson sees the loose man, Cranage in the centre, and directs traffic through him. He runs up towards centre half forward. He's about 70 metres out from goal, puts the ball to within 20 metres. The big men fly up, they go, wait appeals for the mark. It wasn't his south lead in there, he was hung on to by Bob Hurd. It's uh, holding the man decision. Uh, towards Southby, across towards Byrne. Byrne now from back pocket up towards the half-back flank. Goes to short pass. And I don't think Keogh realised it was for him, but it doesn't matter because 30 seconds, 30 minutes and 50 seconds end of the quarter. It's half-time now. Then Collingwood on 5-9, 39, 12 Carlton, 6-11, 47.